Bismillah. Oh, just when I said Bismillah, someone, this mic gets disconnected. I got it, go ahead and get started. All right. Welcome to the Mad One Looks. My name is Sim. Along with me is my co-host, Mort. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum, Morty. Uh, Sheikh Amr is out. His uh, son apparently got hurt and uh, to, had to take him to urgent care. Apparently nothing serious. Small sprain. And then uh, he's off to Disney World apparently tomorrow. Mashallah to him. Is that haram for you or something? I just thought it was kind of funny <laughs> that, you know, he's visiting uh, the false gods <laughs> of Disney. <laughs> the evil Zionist Walt Disney. <laughs> uh, it's just so funny because he's never been there and so this is the first time. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I had so many jokes ready for him. So Can, can I be honest, though? Oh, sorry. Sorry, I have to give me a second here. <laughs> uh, we went to Walt Disney World recently, and honestly, it's not as good as I remember as a child. Like everything's <laughs> old there, dude. They they haven't had a refresh in so long. Like we went it's on this, grimy. Yeah, we went on that little like that that little uh, water boat thing, like yeah. where you sit there, and like it's everything from like the seventies. Like right, it's nothing new. And I'm I was, like, what is this? That's how I felt when I went there. I was like, wait, you guys didn't do refresh on so many things. Nothing. But they they built that Harry Potter. Uh, they castle. did, and and to be honest, the funny thing was the Star Wars. Uh, yeah. They had where we built these lightsabers, the actual yeah. real ones. Are kind of the thing. They were kind of expensive, like four hundred bucks a piece. But it was really cool to make it, though. It was really cool. Oh, that nice. was the only cool thing to do. But everything else was just kind of like, I, it was the exact same thing. The, the exact same thing I left when I was like ten years old. It's the same thing. Well, you gotta check out the Avatar ride, man. The Avatar oh, ride. Yes. Level though, as a Floridian, I gotta I gotta stand up for that. Yeah, I think Universal Studios is better, to be honest. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, come down to Florida. We'll test them all out. We'll do an episode <laughs> live. From inshallah, Disney. inshallah. I, um, I mean, no promises, but my plan is eventually to end up in Florida. Like, I'm trying to get Love out of how... Chicago. I have cousins yeah. in uh, Boynton Beach and Clearwater and like in those areas. And you got Atone. a brother in Tampa. Inshallah, yeah, yeah. I mean, definitely. I'm looking forward to it. Well, our guest today, as you heard, is Hudson Shipley, attorney, um, a jack of all trades. Um, deals with his bio is like two pages long <laughs> <laughs> i just pasted it into our episode description i can't read it all but, but you all know him he's formerly with care um founder of um in a non-profit charity as well all does all kinds of mediation and um family law type work welcome to the show hassan shibley i'm delighted great to be here with you guys again how you doing man blessed man blessed and grateful alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Hey, did you end up making it out to Isna or were you not present? No, I didn't. I was actually just finishing up a charity trip in Kenya. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. We helped alhamdulillah. distribute over 72,000 meals to those in need. Wow. And then I uh, spent a few days networking in Dubai and uh, just got back yesterday after a 15 hour flight. Oh, uh, wow. Enjoyed a full busy day at the office, still at the office, uh, <laughs> inshallah. And then uh, I leave at 7 a.m. to LA tomorrow. So, uh, alhamdulillah. So, so when we were communicating, were you traveling while we were when we had that call? Were you? Um... Yeah, I was. I was calling you from uh, Dubai, actually. Wow, man, you spent all that money on us, man. I feel humble. It's fine, love, bro. <laughs> bro. I love you guys. Anything, oh, anything. Exactly for, uh, for you guys and for the Ummah, inshallah. Inshallah, um, guys. So b before we talk about charities, <laughs> we're a non nonprofit <laughs> charity, <laughs> and uh, just like uh, the, the generous brother is about to talk about. Uh, the great top G giving all these um, uh, funds to distribute uh, charity in uh, in Africa, in a country in Africa that Hassan will soon talk about. We are also a uh, humble charity. We survive on your donations. This allows us to be... Uh, we're the low G's right now. We're the, we're, the, we're the very low G's. We need your support to survive. We're like the uh, the public... Uh, What's it called? The the public media, like uh, NPR and stuff, you know? <laughs> WTTW. <laughs> the, we need your support to survive. We, it's a very expensive operation. 
and none of our incomes can support this without your help. Um, so, a- Andrew Tate, if you're listening, help us out. The <laughs> Mad Bum Loops at brother. gmail.com. Paper. <laughs> you can PayPal us through there, or uh, you can help us out through Patreon as well. Um, Patreon.com forward slash The Mad Bum Loops. Um, yeah, so tell us about this. Uh, this How did this whole thing happen where, you know, Andrew Tate uh, facilitated uh, funds to get... Um, get you the necessary resources you needed to provide funds to Africa. How, how did this whole thing come together? SubhanAllah, you know, Allah is so kind that every hardship and test for the believers contains nothing but goodness for them. This all started actually years ago, back in, in 2019. Um, at that time, you know, I was, I was going through my divorce. It was a very, very difficult time. And I remember uh, being in my house alone and just, just feeling so sad. Um, you know, my, my children uh, were with my mom in, in Jacksonville. I was going back and forth to Jacksonville. Uh, my ex-wife, uh, she had left for Morocco. Um, and um, I was just feeling down. And I saw a video of a brother reciting the Quran so beautifully hmm. in the jungle of Africa. And I could tell he was impoverished. And I just made a sincere dua. And, and that's going to be the theme of today. It's going to be the power of dua. Because that's also what ta- uh, brought in uh, Andrew Tate later on. So I made dua, I said, Ya Allah, use him for your deen and help me to support him. And I shared his video. Next thing I know, people connected us with him, got to know him, uh, Sheikh Samir in uh, Turkana, Kenya, a very remote region. I mean, over there, people are still living in mud huts. They're walking miles to get dirty brown water. Um, I reached out to him and we connected online. I said, what do you need? They said, brother, we need $10,000 to build a masjid. You know, over there, people are still studying the Quran under the tree. You know, they don't have any shade from the sun. It's, it's a very difficult situation. So I spoke to the brothers. And uh, Alhamdulillah, one of the brothers gave me his credit card. He said, let's book our flights, let's go. And before I knew, knew it, we, we gathered about $40,000 to take with us. So we went and, and subhanAllah, we connected with this incredible charity called Healthy Team. They met us on the ground and they just perfected in terms of execution of the charity work. And uh, we started, when we saw the incredible work they did on the ground, we started going, uh, you know, once or twice a year. Alhamdulillah, we've raised as volunteers hundreds of thousands of dollars for them. Uh, to support the communities on the ground there. I mean, the money goes such a long way. I mean, a dollar can provide breakfast, lunch, and dinner for an orphan for a day. So $100 feeds 100 orphans for a day. You know, $200 is a, is a uh, orphan uh, caretaker salary for a month, and that's, uh, that's the good one. You know, people are just utterly impoverished, and we're so grateful to Allah. We've been able to fully support a girl's orphanage there where we built, to Allah's tawfiq, uh, a boy's orphanage from the ground up. And... and Going to Africa in that time, and, and look, Africa has its wealthy parts. So, let, you know, people get upset. They don't want us to stereotype. But uh, as every place does, it also has very impoverished parts. Uh, going there and being able to give back and help and support the people on the ground put so much barakah in my life. It's been, it's been phenomenal. And every hardship turned into ease. I see so much khair and rahmah and barakah uh, coming into my life. So, alhamdulillah, it's what saved me. And I'll tell you, when I was going to Africa, man, especially going through my divorce, and at that time, you know, I... Uh, I thought I'm, you know, I lost my 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 house, my car, uh, my job, my reputation was unjustly under attack. I mean, subhanAllah, I, I really felt like I, at that time I had lost everything. And yet, when I was in in Kenya on the charity trips or Gambia, uh, where, wherever we went, you know, I was living out of my backpack for weeks at a time. And I was like, subhanAllah, all I have with me is this backpack and and a few changes of clothes, and I'm happy, and I'm having an impact. I'm making a difference, and I'm living my best life. So it really got me through that difficult time. So Alhamdulillah, for the last five, six years we've been going every year to support sustainable projects to provide both emergency need but also to uh, provide systems to help people break out of the cycle of poverty. Okay, so, uh, I just need to repeat, the, uh, get this clear from you. You've been doing this for six years. Correct. So this wasn't something that Top G initiated and uh, I'm going to go poverty pimping in, in uh, Kenya. As the latest hit piece against me said, and I, yeah. I thanked Allah when I saw that piece, man, because when I saw that All piece, right. I said, Alhamdulillah, you know, when it comes to our righteous deeds, we never know if we actually have the sincerity <laughs> we need to have for it. But when it comes to getting the blessings of people gossiping against you and, and mocking you, uh, you don't need to have sincerity for that. When people are gossiping against you, you're raking up good deeds. So that's my retirement account. So I thanked Allah. But yeah, it, it's been something we've been doing for six years. Alhamdulillah, we've, been, we've raised hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, done phenomenal projects and uh, alhamdulillah we just did it as volunteers uh, for Allah's, uh, Allah's rahmah and, and Allah has not disappointed us. So so how did you get in contact with with Andrew Tate? Um, Again, another example of the power of dua. 
what happened, I remember on the 25th of Ramadan, you know, I saw one of his more recent videos and just how eloquently he spoke. And I felt, mashallah, this brother has a lot to offer, you know. And, and you look at the lives of the Sahaba. I mean, the Sahaba, some of them were, were alcoholics. Some of them were fornicators. Uh, were, some of them were highway robbers. Some of them were the worst of the worst people. I mean, you look at Omar, radiallahu And it's a cliche. Well, don't compare this person to the Sahaba. No, let us take from the examples. Allah sent us these examples to teach humanity that through the power of Islam, not only can you change your heart, but you can change the world. Islam refines people, purifies people, elevates people. So, subhanAllah, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, gave me the tawfiq that when I, when I saw goodness in this brother, I made a sincere dua on the 25th of Ramadan when I was actually in New York City fundraising for, for a different charity at the time. I don't remember which. Um, I made dua. I said, Ya Allah, connect me with this brother. Connect me with Andrew Tate and use us to serve your faith and humanity together sincerely. That was a dua. And you know, sometimes you make a dua, but... You don't necessarily, because it's so out there. You know, at that time, I mean, you know, uh, Andrew's popular on Twitter, mashallah. He's got almost 8 million followers now. At that time, I had about 4,000 followers on Twitter. I really wasn't active or involved in the Twitter space. Uh, we weren't really in any similar circles. I mean, he was the most Googled man on earth. So there wasn't any practical way of mm -hmm. me thinking that I would connect with him. So a lot of people said, man, if you and him join forces, you can have such an impact. And I was like, yeah, in fact, the, the, I, I believe it. But how would that happen? Well, that's where the power of du'a comes in. So I just made a sincere du'a. You know, as believers, we should always wish good for everyone. Let Allah guide everyone. Let him guide Donald Trump, even guide Joe Biden. Guide anyone that can find guidance and use them for goodness. So alhamdulillah, I mean, uh, you know, Tate had a powerful fitrah when it came to uh, issues of sort of resisting uh, indoctrination resisting an extreme form of woke liberalism that destroys the family structure. Uh, he had a lot of great things to say. So I, I made sincere dua that Allah guides him. And I made dua that Allah blesses us to work together to have a positive impact. I made that dua on the 25th night of Ramadan. And the next thing I know, after we finished tarawih and we're sitting with the brothers eating uh, a post uh, tarawih snack, my phone vibrates and I look at it and it says, Andrew Tate followed you on Twitter. The next thing I know, Andrew Tw Tate sent you a message. Wow. And subhanAllah, we connected at that point. So literally, I made the dua on the 25th of Ramadan, and I saw it answered on the 25th of Ramadan. And so since we've kept in touch uh, through through Twitter, and uh, subhanAllah, just found it to be humble, genuine, and sincere. Look, no one's perfect. He told me himself, he's like, listen, I know I'm a new Muslim. I know I got a lot of faults, but I'm learning and I'm growing. And, and I'll always stand for truth when it comes uh, to what matters most. And, and I found that to be very true with him, subhanAllah. So the next thing I know, his team reaches out and they offer us a donation and alhamdulillah because they they saw the history of our work and uh, within a couple of weeks of that donation we were able to feed 3000 drought stricken people in africa uh, in somalia actually and alhamdulillah they were they were so impressed with how we executed next thing i know they sent us another donation and i said well listen i'm actually going to be on the ground in kenya so i'm going to personally oversee and distribute these funds and alhamdulillah, we were able to provide 400 hot meals to a very needy village uh, that doesn't, maybe this was the first time they ate meat in the whole year. Uh, so alhamdulillah, we were able to provide them that food. And when, when someone saw that, a big business guy in Texas, he saw that donation, he reached out and he provided us enough funding to provide the equivalent of 36,000 meals to the needy. Oh. And then Tate's team reached out, okay, what's the next step? So they match, matched that. And we were able to, alhamdulillah, on the last night, distribute enough food to provide needy families with a total of 72,000 meals. And I will tell you, I mean, it was a rugged journey. It was a difficult journey. We were driving through mountains of unpaved roads. We're getting mm. car sick. We're fatigued. We're exhausted. The bags of food are very heavy, subhanAllah. I mean, it was just... Alhamdulillah, we pushed ourselves to the limits physically. And I remember when we were distributing that food, I remember just feeling so physically drained and tired and exhausted and, and almost sick. And yet, when one of the ladies, she took the package of food, she just made dua for us. And wallahi, the moment she made dua, I felt all the fatigue, all the illness, all the sadness, all the tiredness just completely melt away. It was such a blessing. Um, and it's, it was an honor that we were able to do what we do. And alhamdulillah, now I'm in touch with this team. Uh, they want to, their next project that we're in discussion is going to be in excess of over $100,000 uh, 
inshallah. inshallah and not just immediate distributions but in things that can provide long-term support like education for orphans vocational training and listen they have a history of doing this they've been doing this for years it hasn't always been publicized in fact it was very interesting because i posted a video of the charity distribution on tiktok and tiktok actually removed the video so it's very clear that the social media powers the powers that be they really want to censor and limit the narrative and I, I think that's very telling. So Alhamdulillah, we're just getting started and I'm excited and, and shame on anyone who condemns this. Uh, it's, it's insane. Um, it's insane when you see the poverty on the ground and the impact these donations have and even the impact sharing it on social media has, which inspires further donations that are almost immediately distributed, distributed on the ground and the positive impact it has. You just thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for being able to have that impact. Serving those children, serving those women, serving those in need is more important than anything. And I knew the haters would hate when they see what I'm doing, but I don't care. I don't care because their hate um, uh, uh, is not going to feed the hungry. Well, it's, it's scary people. because, Hudson, uh, I mean, what we, we try to be fair with Andrew Tate and uh, we, we try to say, hey, you know what, this is where he's right about. If he's wrong about something, we'll say that. But people don't, they only are... They're not keeping up with the news cycle. Like, th most people don't even know that, you know, he's out of house for arrest right now, uh, that most of the charges are, are pretty much founded to be uh, unfounded, that he's found, he's filed a counter lawsuit on his, uh, uh, the, the people who, the, the woman who made those allegations against him. Um, so, I mean, it, it's so difficult because there's sometimes there are good people who are, like, getting upset with you, and in their mind, they're right because... They're not able to keep up with the, the the flow of information that's just happening like that, you know. And um, it's like hard to talk to people because they just stick something on someone and it just sticks. And they're not keeping up with the news. And they don't know, like, I'm sure if you're an Andrew Tate fan, you would know everything that's happening right away. But these people, that they're just like, oh, you're you're uh, taking money from this abuser, misogynist, etc. Um and, and then you you kind of get associated with that, you know? Yeah. So 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 here here's my thing. I think, unfortunately, Muslims today have fallen for this new agenda that you can uh, this this cancel culture that now once someone has made a mistake, even in their past, that nothing can redeem them. They're irredeemable. Mm. And we as Muslims don't have that attitude. We believe Allah can forgive anything. Including shirk billah, if you, I mean, make toba for it. But even if you, well, let's say someone doesn't make toba, let's say he forgets to do something, right? Whatever it may be. But we know from the hadith that the way to cancel out bad deeds is by good deeds. So if someone's trying, that means someone's trying to redeem themselves, even if they're making mistakes. So this idea that it's all or nothing is not from the condition of a, it's not from the character of a believer to simply just say, okay, you made that one mistake forever. You're condemned. We don't believe in that. We don't believe it's satanic. Yes. It's satanic. satanic. And, and, I mean, cancel yeah. culture is absolutely satanic. What it wants to do is define people by the worst of what they're accused of instead of the reality and instead of allowing them to grow. Now, when you look at Andrew Tate, first of all, I mean, it's crazy. They locked them up uh, in jail for months and months on end. And then they put them in house arrest for months and months on end. And they have not been able to present a solid case against him, despite all the resources they put. Now, look, it's clear Andrew has been involved in some things that we may disagree with on a moral or an Islamic perspective. And this was before he became Muslim. They weren't illegal things. They were things that, frankly, many of the U.S. politicians are involved in. I mean, many of the U.S. Uh, politicians are involved in uh, pornography, alcohol, just things that we detest as Muslims. The difference is Andrew left those things. Uh, he embraced Islam, he made Tawbah, he's growing as a person. Um, and, and I just, it's not of the Islamic faith to define people by the worst of what is claimed against them. The Prophet Muhammad once one of the companions actually committed treason, he sent a letter to the Meccans to warn them that the Prophet was about to invade Mecca. Abdullah this was an act Salud. of treason. Yeah. Yes, uh, uh, well, it wasn't Abdullah bin Salud who did this. Okay. Uh, it, was, uh, it, was, it, was, it was a righteous Sahabi. Uh, but uh what happened is the prophet muhammad sallam, intercepted that letter and then brought him for judgment and omar said let me cut off the head of this hypocrite but this was a sincere sahabi and the prophet sallam, said no omar this is a man of Badr. how do you know allah did not look at him during Badr and say do whatever you want you're forgiven the prophet sallam, defined people by their best actions and encouraged them to be the best that they can be shaitan wants to define us by our worst actions and limit us to that oh that person is bad they can only do bad they should never do good 
that's satanic. That's not what any faith is about. So Alhamdulillah, you know, we welcome the, the support and uh, inshallah, this becomes a means of uh, increased guidance and increased forgiveness for him. And we're already seeing the barakah. And I will tell you, uh, he is someone uh, uh, that, that I communicate with on a one-on-one -on -one level. And I, I'll tell you my personal reaction, even when I've seen him tweet things uh, that, I, that, that, that maybe uh, are not consistent with, with, with the Islamic morals, um, for example, a tweet that may sh show women wearing bikinis. You know, I've messaged him about it, and he's replied so graciously and so humbly. The brother just converted. He has nothing to gain by converting. In fact, he had everything to lose. And notice how he was arrested not long after his conversion. Um, so, I mean, I, I scoff at the people who think that his embracing Islam was some sort of move for personal gain. No, it takes a lot of sacrifice. It isn't easy. And, in, uh, you know, I, I have tremendous hope in the goodness that will come out of him as he continues to go out of his religion. In his religion, we need to support that. That's what uh, true Islamic Brotherhood is about. Yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, honestly, I, 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 I always tr uh, kind of, I, I sometimes even have to check myself because, you know, sometimes someone does something and you just, you may not like it, right? And then you have to kind of control your emotions and say, listen, you know what, I mean, if somebody opens up your life and looks at the mistakes that you make, right? And you, to be honest, you're honored that Allah has hid your sins. If Allah exposed your sins and opened it up to the world, most of us would be hanging our heads in, in shame, right? And, and if you don't protect the sins of your brother, Allah will expose you. And if you don't want, you know, and this is a big thing, like people and, and the ones that are pointing the fingers, they're not perfect. They have they're a lot of things. Worse things yes. And, and sometimes and, and, you know, I feel like they do that. They intentionally take on that crusade because they're trying to in some way overcompensate. Uh, yes. And, and, and clear their own conscience that, oh, I'm the righteous person here. I'm the defender of right. And, you know, I, I condemn wrong Virtual and I'm signal. principled. Right. And in fact, they're trying to convince themselves of this um this righteousness because they co they're compensating for the fact that they know they've made mistakes they know they have their sins and they're not turning away from it and so they and it's easier to blame somebody else rather than to work on yourself that's exactly what it is you know and it, what's crazy is they they falsely use this claim of hypocrisy uh oh this person they did this in the past but now they're doing this so they must be a hypocrite no my brothers no one is perfect. The Prophet Muhammad taught us if you didn't sin, Allah would replace you with the people who sin and ask for forgiveness because Allah loves to forgive. A believer does make mistakes. A believer may fall into sin. But the difference is, as the Prophet said, follow up a sin with a righteous deed and it will erase it. He didn't say, oh, if you if you do sins and you do righteous deeds, you're a hypocrite. He said, no, it'll erase it. The Quran itself says, And another group, they acknowledge their sins. They do sometimes bad deeds, sometimes good deeds. Asallahu an yatubu alayhim. Allah loves to forgive them. Why are we trying to destroy each other? Why, why are we trying to condemn each other? Who succeeds when a believer is condemned except shaitan? He wants us to fall into hopelessness. That's from his name. He is the hopeless one who wants a believers to be hopeless and wants us to make others hopeless and, yeah. and put them beyond redemption. Whereas Allah calls for forgiveness. Yeah. Allah actually, anytime he actually try to prohibit like hopelessness he says don't be like la don't 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 have any 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 fear or or, or don't don't be distressed by this right this ayah here i mean it's speaking directly about a sahabi who was wondering if allah could forgive him mm. and this ayah was revealed and it says in allah and i always mention this but it's beautiful to me because allah that could have used any word to address you know the, the individual but he calls them Hulya Ibadi. You know, he, he mm. addresses them in a, in, a, in, a, in a endearing term. Like, Absolutely. don't despair from the mercy of Allah. I mean, he can forgive everything and he will forgive everything if you turn to him in repentance. And that's and the whole idea. Allah doesn't look at the sin so much. He looks at the toba that you make. Are you sincere Absolutely. in your repentance? And I don't understand the hate that's out there. I mean, why wouldn't you want goodness for you? Why wouldn't you want it to be true that the person changed and is growing and is going to be a force of good. We all benefit. Otherwise, if someone is condemned we, and, and they remain in that evil state, we all lose. But I, you know, I think this takes us on to a bigger subject and, and maybe segueing into our next topic, which is the, the harm of social media trials. Yeah. You know, trying where, where people in the wrong venue where you cannot adequately look at the evidence, cross-examine the evidence, cross-examine the witnesses, 
make judgments as if you know what you're talking about. You know, the Prophet ﷺ also said, من حسن إسلام المرء ترك ما لا يعني from the beauty of one's Islam is leaving that which doesn't concern him. Mm-hmm. Not talking about that which he, he has no knowledge of. You know, again, most people, as as our brother uh, Sayyid uh, just mentioned, they, they, they have no first-hand knowledge. They're not keeping up with the news. They don't know the evidence. Um, and they're just they're just uh, talking uh, out of thin air, you know, ma- making up opinions. And they're not doing and I, And I notice people are two types. People are either uh, doers or talkers. Mm-hmm. You know, somebody who's busy doing and having uh, making an impact in this world, and and uh, uh, being uh, working towards a positive change in this world, they don't have time to talk about others. Mm-hmm. You don't find people that are busy building orphanages, helping the needy, uh, serving the oppressed. They don't have time to sit and blast others. It, it's impossible. And those that have the time to sit and blast others and attack others and judge others. They are definitely. You know, Hassan. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, but this this is I say it's a first world problem. Go ask a, a person in poverty in a different country if he has to worry about what someone else is doing. The That's fact crazy. that you can com- can spend time and keep up with the the tabloid news, and mm-hmm. then comment on it and have conversations in the luxury of your homes, in the comfort of your homes, it's a first world problem. It like is, anyone who's is. traveled in Africa or the Middle East and certain parts of it where people are impoverished, you will know that these things are trivial. <laughs> they don't Absolutely. mean anything. That's they're talking from an ivory tower. When you see the poverty on the ground and, and you're there firsthand, shame on you if you're gonna condemn where the funds are coming from. You know, you're putting your own political agendas and your ego above the needs of the people. And I will tell you that, I mean, it's funny because that article that came out uh, uh, about me doing the charity work was basically doubting whether we were even there, whether we were really doing it. It's crazy because if you follow my Instagram story, you you literally see the whole journey. Um, but they're like, well, how do these people that are so impoverished know about, uh, you know, Andrew Tate? And, and why would, you know, how would they know to say thank you, Top G? This was all orchestrated. And it's like, nah, bro, that was all from the locals' idea. One of the local staff members uh, over there, they live on two hundred dollars a month. But you know what? They have a cell phone. He's the most googled man on earth. They know who he is, and they were so grateful for his support. All of them were. I mean, they knew who he was. Uh, you know, the year is twenty twenty three. You know, even the poorest people nowadays, a lot of them, um, you know, within the community, they'll know someone with a phone. They'll sit together. They'll watch something. Um, they were grateful. They were grateful. Those on the ground who needed it were extremely yeah. grateful. And I have no regrets whatsoever. I'm grateful for the generous support of Andrew Tate, the War Room. Uh, and the Tate Pledge, and I'm just excited at the potential impact we're going to continue to be having together, inshallah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, on that point, I mean, to be honest, anyone who has donated over there, um, <laughs> they usually tell the people on the ground who it's from, and like sometimes they'll hold a sign or a letter, like, thank you, so I'll record a little video, like, we've made wells, and they'll say your name. Like, they may not know everything about you, but they mm-hmm. certainly will know where the funds came from. Yeah, they just, they're not right. that ignorant of... Uh, of people who are helping them like they they're, they're not dumb people they're just they're impoverished <laughs> yeah they're yeah, grateful for I, yeah. It. and the other thing i wanted to mention about this was this that if i don't mind um certain c- criticisms need to be there because we want to hold people accountable right which is fair mm-hmm. game so if you're in a public fine but my problem is that if you're going to criticize without a solution and if you're just going to be criticizing and you don't have constructive cr- criticism where you're providing an alternative solution or a remedy for the problem, then you're not really contributing anything. 100%. You're, and that's my biggest problem with a lot of the people that really um, do these watchdog things. And my problem is that if you're not providing a solution to what you're talking about, then you're just adding to the problem. Right. And they're not donating and they're not, they're not having an impact. It's, it's crazy. I will tell you this. Um, when, when it comes to these donations, I mean, sometimes people are, get upset. Oh, well, why are you sharing on social media? You're just doing this for the ego and this and that and the other. It's like, brother, when we share this on social media, you know how much more donations we get? That mm-hmm. we, and we're not taking a dime from this. But we can immediately, we actually immediately translate those donations into action and service and support for those on the ground. So the more we publicize this, the more donations it inspires. It has a compounded ripple effect. Look at that. Andrew Tate donated to support 400 uh, people to have a hot meal. A businessman saw that and said, you know what? I'm going to support to to fund 32,000 meals for the needy. And then the war room said, what? No, we're going to now match that. And 
all of a sudden, you know, we, we've supported 72,000 meals. And then after that, as people are watching the videos, guess what? They're sending more donations. And yep. the people are the ones that benefit. And that's what this is all about. At the end and of the day. you know, even Serving at a microcosm and a level, when you go to the Masjid in Tarawih, when they're asking who's going to donate $100 or $1,000, people raise their hands. They're doing it not because they want to show off, but they're trying to encourage others and race towards goodness. Right. This Absolutely. is something where you can compete in goodness. It may. I mean, obviously, some scholars have different opinions about it, but there is a concept of racing towards goodness. If you see somebody else doing it, you can be jealous of that and, and race towards it and try to compete with that and say, you know what? I don't want to lose on that barakah. I don't want to lose on that on that goodness that, that I can get from this. And that's a, some it's actually of, one of the few things you're allowed to compete yes, about. Yes, absolutely. And that's the halal competition. You know, asabi like these things are being of the first people, right? Like to do this. Well, the Quran actually speaks about those who give openly and secretly. We yeah. should do both. And and the, what people don't even know is, in, uh, you know, one of the first uh, first donations we did on behalf of the Tates was to feed hungry orphans in the Gambia. Um, I, you know, I had just started talking to Andrew at the time, uh, and I, I didn't post about it, but I did give it to him. And you know what? He didn't post about it. It wasn't posted about for months. Wait, Nobody when was this? About it. And, uh, sorry, this was back in May. Okay. This was back in May. Uh, I just yeah. shared it, I think, today. Uh, but then today, I'm like, you know what? People are saying that this is just being done for clout or for influence. It's like, no, nah, man, a lot of the donations that we do, that, we, uh, that we've done, even on behalf of the Tates, they don't, we don't even publicize them. But I said, you know what? Let me publicize this old one. Again, just to show that this is part of the track record, alhamdulillah. You know, I don't, I don't know how this brother who wrote the article uh, about poverty pimping in Africa is going to stand before Allah and answer for that. I mean, people, you know, Allah says you say, say something lightly and you think it's light, but it's great and it's horrendous in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah's given us tawfiq. We've been doing this for years. And, and honestly, alhamdulillah, we're grateful to see the impact. And I'll tell you this, I have seen the impact in my own life. I mean, through doing the charity work, I've seen how everything I've lost in my hard times, Allah gave it back and gave it back tenfold. Allah's wow. most kind. Alhamdulillah, now, we truly are benefiting ourselves when we do the charity work. Well, w did you use your own charity or did you use uh, an outside charity? Oh, and why wouldn't you use your own charity? Because you started sure. your charity. Sure. I mean, look, I'll tell you very frankly, with somebody with my skills, it's very easy to have my own charity and I can go every Friday uh, and I can fundraise and I can have complete control of the uh, money. But for me, that's too much of a burden and a responsibility. Uh, we did help start a U.S. chapter of this charity that we work with. But this charity, Help Your Team, uh, was started by some Somali immigrants, really refugees to the United Kingdom, who mm -hmm. have established their own businesses and now volunteer to run this organization. MashaAllah. And they just take it with such, I mean, they, they spend from their own wealth, alhamdulillah, to support the charity. And I'll tell you this, I mean, this trip was a little different if, uh, than most because you know, when I started doing this work, I was still working at CARE. And then I was pretty much jobless uh, hmm. for a little time. So in my first uh, trips, I really wasn't donating myself. I was just encouraging others. I mean, I would give a little bit, but nothing significant. Um, and it's amazing because on this trip, Alhamdulillah, when we were there um, and we saw a need, you know, before I would just put a video or a picture, hey, guys, donate. And people would donate. But I'm like, man, you know, there'll be the time for that. I'll save that for the big ones. But for this, Alhamdulillah, I can do it myself. Uh, you know, thanks to my law firm and, and, and the success I've had personally. So it's incredible. You know, we're out there. The people who run this charity, the people who support this charity, the people who fundraise for this charity, not only they're not on the payroll, but they're actually givers themselves. May Allah yeah. accept from us. I mean, I mean, you know, I, 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 I've talked about this a few times in the show, and, and this is just only a, a, just a personal reflection. But uh, for me, uh, alhamdulillah, I'm, I'm very content where I am in, in my life. And But I, would, I always remind people, there's two things I believe that Allah allowed me to have, or I mean, uh, Allah allowed me to have success in, and, and it's because of these two things. The dua of my parents, and then second is sadaqah. The money that you give away for people, from your own pocket uh, you may think it's a burden on you but the blessings that you get and it's not just the monetary the, like the monetary return that you get it's those little doors in your life that close and then Allah opens them for you the opportunities you get or those things that would have been troublesome for you and Allah makes it you makes it pass with ease it's a form of of, of uh, of making things easier for you. And alhamdulillah, I can tell anyone out there, if you have problems or even, no matter, I'm not asking you to donate thousands of dollars or whatever is comfortable for you, but be consistent in it. Allah will reward and open these doors for people who don't, I mean, who, who, who give, uh, you know, without 
uh, you know, trying to take account and say, oh, Allah, I did this. Now give me that, right? Like, I mean, who just give for the sake of giving because they want that, uh, that benefit from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I can tell you this much, the dua of people that get this money, there is nothing, even if it's a non-Muslim, there is no barrier between that dua and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I remember specifically one time uh, there was a, uh, when I was, this happened to me recently. I was trying to move places and I had my parents staying with me and um, for whatever reason, it was a, a, they weren't supposed to stay with me, but they were and I had recently come back to Chicago and it was a two bedroom apartment. And, but they had come to me full time. I had given them the full main big bedroom and I was living in a tiny little room. Um, and I've been looking and looking just because my parents need a, a sp specific kind of house because my dad is ill. So I was just looking around, couldn't find something. And I was getting ready to just sign a lease on two different apartments and say, okay, I take a three bedroom, I'll give them a two bedroom and we'll live side by side because I couldn't find anything. I couldn't buy a home that matched. It, 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 it didn't, nothing was available. Um, and I remember on the last day, someone had told us, you know, there's a poor family in the country uh they're they really just need three more thousand dollars just to to have a home they'll have a home and they'll be protected and they don't have to be kicked around in the streets we said okay fine we'll give that night i was just happy to look on zillow i'm like you know what let me see this and i this this house that was perfect for me came up on the market and i was able to get it alhamdulillah i was just about to sign the lease and I didn't want to do that because I had to be separate from my parents. I take care of them. I didn't want to do that. I was trying to find something side by side. But Alhamdulillah, Allah immediately opened that door for me like this. And Alhamdulillah, it worked. And my parents couldn't be happier today. I couldn't be happier. The home is exactly what I need. But Allah opened that door. When you ease someone else's burden, Allah will ease your burden. 100%. Wallahi, I, I lived through it. When, again, when I started my charity work, I was going through a very difficult time. And to be honest, it got harder. You know, uh, it's I started my charity work at the time when things started to go bad. And the reason I got into it is I'm like, listen, my, I mean, I work full time at care. So I do Islamic work, you know, at that time for a living. But I wanted to do something that was that had no financial benefit, you know, that I wasn't on the payroll for. That was purely, inshallah, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I started doing it. And then not long after, uh, you know, I got falsely attacked, smeared in the media. When my name was cleared, they refused to update their stories that I was vindicated, subhanAllah. And I ended up, you know, uh, again, uh, resigning from my job, losing my house, my car. I mean, I went through a very difficult period. And at that time, shaitan messes with your head and you're like, well, well, you're doing the charity work and, and where's Allah's help? And your, uh, Allah promises to help the oppressed and you're oppressed, where's Allah's help? And, and at that time, you don't see how he's gonna help you, but you just blindly trust. And subhanAllah, things get harder as yeah. Allah's just testing you. But then it's like a slingshot. Allah's pulling you back so you can soar forward. And that's yeah. exactly what happened. I saw through the barakah of the charity work. Yes, things got harder initially, only so I can accelerate even higher. Alhamdulillah. And that's exactly what happened. I promise everyone, if you're going through hard times, help others. And you will surely find Allah's help in due times in ways far greater than you can imagine. Um, Hassan, we're going to take a quick break uh, for prayer. We'll be back in like five minutes. Is all that right. all right? All right, man. We'll be back. All right, we'll be back, inshallah.
MashaAllah, we prayed. Say <laughs> Alhamdulillah, you prayed. No, MashaAllah, say Alhamdulillah. Uh, the people, you don't want the people to give you uh, oh, Hasid or Ayn, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so Look at them, they're telling people they're praying more if they're showing off. <laughs> oh, bro, that's how it's gotten. You guys didn't pray Salah, long bro. enough. It wasn't the long enough. <laughs> it was too fast. <laughs> yeah. Um, no. Yeah. So Hassan, um, we b before we get started on this next subject, we talked before the show. Everyone knows um, this buzz that's happening around this um, viral video that's going around uh, about a certain brother who is upset at his ex-wife who happens to be a prominent person. And I'm getting messages all from all around the world about it. We agreed to not spread this uh, um Al these allegations, these, uh, who knows what's right or wrong. So we're just going to talk about it in general. We're going to not mention the names and just talk about the topic in, in general sense. And y people who know about what we're talking about know about it. But uh, well, and it's they, a general topic. But it's a general topic. It's happening all over. Yeah, it's happening it all over the world. Yeah. Every couple months, every few months, you know, someone feels that they are justified in attacking they're either current or past significant other mm. on social media. This is very common, especially when one spouse is well known and one spouse isn't. It's actually very common in almost every, in, in fact, in just about every case this happens, when you actually dig in, you will see that at some point before the trigger, after all the allegedly bad things happened, you know, because they'll say, oh, they did this, they did this, they did this, you'll see that they're actually trying to get back together and the spouse refuses <laughs> and then it's like well you know uh, and uh, if i can't have you i'm going to destroy you again i'm not talking about any particular situation but that's a common pattern i see and and look my concern is that we need to wake up as a community and realize social media is not the right venue to have trials where people's lives are at stake and this is the problem people want to have social media trials social media is not the right venue it's very easy for anyone to put out any accusations against anyone and this often actually you know it's it, in this case it's it's harming a sister but uh but uh, as the direct victim but i also believe it's harming the brother um i believe it's it's harming any children that are involved the family members i believe it's harming the community as a whole and that's why i've advised both of them not to wage war on social media it isn't right it sets a bad precedent look it doesn't matter what the brother is alleging is true or not social media is not the right venue for this for many reasons we're setting a very bad precedent uh, you know, the problem with social media is, again, you cannot cross-examine the evidence. You cannot cross-examine the witnesses. Um, and, and people jump to crazy conclusions. Like somebody can say, well, this happened to me. I mean, for example, I mean, somebody could show a picture that they have a black eye, right? Um, but again, a picture of a black eye is absolutely no proof that the person you're claiming gave you the black eye gave you the black eye. You know, this is why you need the proper venue the proper court, the proper uh, arbitration, the proper mediation mechanisms where you can look at um, uh, and, and see and analyze the evidence and make a conclusion when you're qualified. Uh, most of the people that are, all the people are, 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 are unqualified and have not been in touch with the parties. Again, I mean, I could show, you know, uh, pictures that, that my house was egged. Okay, my house was egged. That's indisputable. But again, that's not proof that the person I'm accusing of egging it actually egged it you, you know could have egged it yourself Hassan. i could egged it myself so this is <laughs> hey it's it's a false flag attack you know the u.s is good at them you yeah. know we know that um so the point is my brothers i'm just utterly shocked and disappointed at many within our community especially many with with large social media following they're jumping on the bandwagon they have whatever acts to grind everybody has their own agendas and and they just take a person's words at face value whether they're true or not is irrelevant what I'm concerned with is you haven't gone by the process to vet and to know whether they're true. A person can show all the evidence they have, but if those if the evidence hasn't been presented in a way where it can be analyzed and cross-examined, it's meaningless. Yeah. And I believe we're setting a very, very dangerous precedent. I mean, I saw a video the other day of Sheikh uh, bin Baz, who passed away you know, decades ago, and there's a video of him talking about his death and how he's dead now, and, and it was just AI created. I mean, you can fabricate video you can fabricate audio you can definitely fabricate screenshots it, it's it's crazy the times we live so, in and that's all the more reason why you cannot accept social media 
trials, social media trials are, are, are destructive to the community. And more often, they, 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 they harm men, actually, and they harm families. It's very often that the, a person is popular, successful, going through a divorce, uh, ex-wife gets bitter for whatever reason, throws out allegations. Those allegations could push somebody to suicide, for crying out loud. And, and they, they may be true, they may not be true, but the people are not qualified. My whole position is, what is the end goal, a game? What is the goal? Uh, because if the goal is uh, some form of justice, social media is not how you achieve that. In social media, all you can do is smear, slander, and harm. It's not how you achieve justice. No. I have never, ever seen a case where someone has attacked a significant other on social media where they didn't later regret it. And I have never seen a case where someone's attacked a significant other on social media without first fully exhausting alternative remedies without first actually engaging in proper mediation arbitration in fact a lot of times the reason people do this is because everyone they go to advises them that well maybe you're either in the wrong or maybe this isn't something that listen the the, the, the divorce uh, didn't or the marriage didn't work you guys are going through a divorce just move on with your life there's nothing can be, can be done and, and the and the scholars and the experts have advised people to move on or something and the people didn't like the advice or just quite frankly didn't agree with them um, and, and again, my concern is social media trials are destructive. You're, you're accepting people's allegations at face value. That is not the Islamic tradition. The Prophet Muhammad said proof, the burden of proof is on the accuser, right? Um, but again, it doesn't mean you could just throw out whatever you claim to be evidence. You have to provide it in a venue where it can be properly applied, uh, examined, the context of which can be understood. And I feel we are setting up ourselves for destruction because now anyone can have somebody be upset with them and just throw out allegations. And now we have a culture where this is accepted. Now, in this case, I know a lot of men were saying, well, you know, usually it's the sisters that are accusing the men. And now it's good to show that a sister is better. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. Again, you haven't gone through the process. My concern is the process. The process hasn't fairly concluded anything. There has been no process. Just throwing allegations on social media without proper analysis. And I can, as a lawyer, poke so many holes in the whole thing. Again, as I mentioned, you can show your house was egged. That's not conclusory proof that that person egged it. Maybe the person did egg it, maybe they didn't. But if we just accept that and jump to conclusions, we're accepting a weak system, a weak process, we're accepting a very low standard to destroy people's lives. You have to understand when somebody's attacked on social media, especially if they're well known, it could be the end of their life. I mean, literally there's people that have killed themselves over that. You cannot be going to that nuclear level if it isn't absolutely necessary. And I have never seen a case where it was absolutely necessary. I'm going to push you push back at you, about. Hassan, because you're, you're what what you're um, essentially saying that a lot of people will say is, well, you're describing the, the Me Too movement too then. Absolutely, I am. <laughs> absolutely, it was destructive. How many innocent men have had their lives destroyed? How many innocent men have spent years in jail for allegations of rape that they never engaged in? I mean, it's sickening. There is no such thing as believe her or believe him. That's not what our faith teaches us, right? Our faith teaches us to have a system, to have process, to have justice. And you can, just can't be destroying people's lives like that. If someone's done wrong, then go through the proper channels. And the proper channels are there. There is goodness in this ummah. There's court systems. There's uh, there's mediation systems. There's arbitration systems. There's a proper way to deal with it. I'm just saying social media isn't the right way. And there's many, many reasons why it isn't. Well, then, if social media isn't, then are community leaders and Islamic scholars, are they responsible for vetting out these allegations because um you know in the in the past they were involved with a popular um, muslim speaker out of the, maybe the or united maybe states not, to be you know honest. because uh, I, I, they kind of set a precedence ahead. with that well no the issue is they just may not have the bandwidth the expertise the time right i mean these are specialized things i mean there's a reason i paid a lot of money spent a lot of time going to law school so i can learn to analyze evidence right um, you, you need qualified experts, and there's plenty, and, and some are scholars, and some are not. You know, I myself, I don't consider myself a scholar, but I'm a lawyer. I'm trained to look at the evidence, to examine it. I'm trained. I was certified in mediation. You know, I'm trained in these things. You need just qualified, trained people. And frankly, some of the things don't even need to be exposed. Our religion is not a religion of exposing people's private sins, you know. So there's private sins. There's public abuse of power. There's many different things. To establish whether someone did that or not, there needs to be a fact-finding body, a fact-finding mission. And by the way, there's some organizations that are horrific, that are destructive, that claim to be that, but they're not. Because what they want to do is they want to be so-called victims, advocates, uh, investigators, and also judges. You can't be the lawyer, investigator, and the judge in the same case. Complete conflict of interest. You need neutral bodies that just approach these neutrally. And they exist. I mean, my own law firm www.shamelessplug.muslimlegal.com. 
We do that. We do Islamic mediation. We can do investigations. We do arbitration. We've been very successful. In fact, in our mediation, we've had a hundred percent success rate. Alhamdulillah. We do what we call uh, tandem mediation. You know, tandem mediation, which involves a male and a female mediator. I have a, a sister, Danielle, mashallah. She's a, a certified family mediator. I myself, uh, a, 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 I'm a formerly certified mediator. I just let it lapse because, frankly, I was so busy. I didn't need to uh, uh, keep it. Uh, but I am a uh, licensed lawyer and we work together. And alhamdulillah, every single mediation case we've got and we've been able to amicably resolve it. There needs to be a resolution at the end of the day. You can't, what, where's the end game? If you just you smear your spouse and they smear you and then the whole community gets, gets the sin of gossip. But shouldn't the, have... the community be aware? Shouldn't they know like who they're inviting onto the stage, so, onto into okay. their mosques and their, who, who might be teaching their children? Like if sure, any of these the allegations are, are true. Trial, but, but if they are true, but the social yeah. media trials don't establish that because again, there's many, many uh, uh, issues with how the evidence is analyzed, what's facts, what's not. We as the social media crowd are not in a position to know if we don't have firsthand knowledge, if we haven't reviewed the evidence, if we're not trained, we haven't analyzed it. So my whole point is if it gets to the point where it goes beyond private sins, a lot of times it just gets to private sins and people's private shortcomings. But when it gets beyond that and there's a community issue, even then it has to be investigated through the proper bodies and channels. And then if if a, a report comes out and the son of Adam may have slip ups, at that time, it can be presented in, in the proper way. It, it does not justify uh, a, a social media attack. And I believe those things are destructive and they harm the people that cause the attack as well. So would an organization well. like Muslim Legal be some, uh, some kind of, uh, after your fact finding mission and arbitration, would you say, hey, um, what party X did did indeed do the wrongs that they that were alleged and release it to the public? No, right? That's or... something we could do. So no, okay. it depends, right? So mediation by default, especially when you involve a, a, a certified mediator, is by default confidential. Um, however, we can create custom arrangements. What we can do, and we've spoken to parties about this. In fact, I've spoken to the parties in, in in the case you're referencing about this is what can be done is the parties agree okay we're going to have a tribunal we're going to have three uh, whether they're mediators or arbitrators fact finders or investigate whatever however we want to set it up and the parties sign that the 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 body uh, can have the ability to publish a report with its findings you know and they agree that those findings will be fair and acceptable so yes that can be done and it should be done that's the right way and, and that's why i always urge parties you know uh, and when I see somebody attacking somebody, I ask them, did you, did you exhaust? Did you both try to do some mediation, some arbitration, uh, go before a fact finding judge? You know, and m most of the times it's, it's absolutely not. And that's, that's a problem. So again, what I'm telling everybody, what I'm telling people that are tweeting, that are sharing uh, and are making conclusions is brother, it doesn't matter whether your conclusions are right or wrong. The fact is you weren't in a position to know. All you did is see something from one side um, without cross-examining it, without critically analyzing it, assume it's true and then jump on it. And you're jumping on it now because it's against a sister, but, you, but you're not gonna jump on it when it's against a brother or vice versa. I mean, and I tweeted about that. I'm so upset when I see men who would not share allegations against other men. Now they're jumping to share allegations against another woman, a woman. And at the same time, I'm very upset about women who are quick to share allegations about men, but now are silent or not sharing allegations about a woman. It shows both are hypocrites. It, it, and even I've seen sincere and religious people fall into that hypocrisy. You it's know, become a gender war. It's destructive to our community yeah. and our society. We're not gonna engage in gender wars. We have to be principled. So real quick for the, there's a lot of men who are saying, well, we're tired of this Me Too movement and, and men being attacked. And now it shows that a sister is bad. I'm like, again, Maybe she is, maybe she isn't, right? As believers, we give everybody benefit of the doubt, you know, innocent until proven guilty. But the point is, even if she is, you haven't engaged in a process to, to fairly conclude that she is. It's not right. So my advice to everyone is you're not qualified. You have no firsthand knowledge. You're taking a gamble with Allah because if what you're saying is wrong, you're per pretty much cursing yourself. You know, Allah speaks very harshly about passing on false allegations in the Quran. Why are you going to take that gamble and risk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you haven't engaged in the process? The process itself is flawed. Social media is not the right venue. You're destroying yourself. You're destroying your dunya. You're destroying your akhirah. And what you're doing is promoting 
this 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 social media circus when you need to take the oxygen out of it when we need to say this is unacceptable so for the men that are sharing this saying that oh it's 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 you know it just shows against the me too no you're reinforcing the me too movement you're reinforcing the belief her movement now by 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 just sharing allegations that have not been vetted uh through the proper authorities you're, now, you're Hassan, reinforcing that if yes. someone like if someone uh is indeed wrong let's just say if i if i knew i did something wrong i don't know if i would go to you i would probably try to say hey leave me alone i'm not going to respond to any of your messages from hassan or from my accuser and i'm just going to shut myself out and not um just pretend like you know uh, the ostrich in the sand put the head in the sand and uh hope like uh nothing happens what happens that's then? what happens but it's usually the accuser in every case that i've seen it's the accuser that's refusing to go to the proper uh, uh venue now they may claim i went to sheikh so-and-so and sheikh so-and-so and sheikh so well brother sheikh so-and-so barely has time to see his own children sheikh so-and-so is drowning trying to do dawah work he's not a qualified expert in these things right um what you need to do is you need to fork up some money uh pay people a few hundred dollars an hour to sit and deal with your problems and 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 bring it to the table so what i would often say is when there's a conflict uh the aggrieved party should demand islamic mediation or arbitration and should request it from the other party and and have this in writing and i would say the other party should agree even if they feel they've done nothing wrong i mean i've seen this well i've done nothing wrong i'm not going to agree to it well that's your opinion that you've not done anything wrong but they're claiming you have so come and usually those that have done nothing wrong are willing to participate in some sort of process and if they're not that in itself is a big a big warning sign but i can tell you how many times i've seen a spouse attack their their well-known spouse and before then the well-known spouses begged them hey bring a council of qualified experts to judge between us and let's stick with their judgment and, and the person for some reason or other uh refuses so you know I, i'm urging everyone right now uh, that's involved in any sort of family conflict don't do don't do it the social media way you will regret it there's no end in sight for it it just it distracts everyone it's satanic it's the work of shaitan i believe rather we're not saying be quiet we're not saying uh you know uh, allow yourself to be oppressed no but go through the proper channels and i will tell you we ourselves will ensure you get the proper channels again that's what we do and if and if i will tell you this i mean i'm not afraid if someone claims somebody oppressed them and uh if we can take legal action we'll take legal action uh but even before then we will demand mediation and arbitration and if the other party refuses then we are not afraid to publicly come out and say listen uh, you know this person demanded arbitration and they refused okay and maybe now because there's a continue continued harm and that has to be another condition it's not about exposing somebody's past sins but that there's a continued harm there is a continued harm we've demanded islamic arbitration the parties refused you can make that public and just that again the underlying facts we we you cannot make a conclusion of unless you've done the investigation but i think that in of itself says a lot yeah i mean i'm just thinking about this i think i'm um thinking about this whole thing in like in in hindsight and i think one of the biggest things is that a lot of people they they don't think like they don't they think the pen is lifted when they get to social media that was as if allah won't hold them accountable for what they actually write and the problem with that is that whatever you put out on the internet can never be taken back it's there till the end of time now it's written in, I mean, it's one thing if it actually, for me, it's better that you gossip in private than to put it on the internet because oh, absolutely. the internet is for everyone to see. And it's a, it's a written evidence against you. Like in, even people who read that, who had no idea what you were talking about will become witnesses against you on that day when you were spreading false information or maybe and it could, it could be out of ignorance, but ignorance does not excuse you in this case. You Prophet cannot be, yeah, there's he ayah about this that, in the Quran, right? Well, Even and, and the hadith that a person will say a lie and tabdukul afaq, it'll reach the skies, it'll reach the heavens, it'll reach the satellite. And that's yeah. what's happening today. Again, look, I want to be very clear. This is not to take a position about any one particular case or side or say anyone is right or, or wrong in terms of what they're claiming. Our point is it's irrelevant because social media is not the right venue. That's what I'm saying. That's my message. You cannot take anything Put on social media at face value you cannot take it as truth especially when now you're jumping to a conclusion about someone no matter what the evidence is again 
evidence can be fabricated, it can be taken out of context, it needs to be cross-examined. You know, when I'm in a courtroom and somebody presents their evidence, so I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen. Somebody presents their evidence and the judge looks convinced and the jury looks convinced and then wait till I get on the stand. Um, I mean, I, I had a trial the other day, right? Uh, this, this father is trying to take the kids away from the mother. He wants to move to another state and Haram, the mother can't afford to move to the other state. They're divorced already. He wants to move to the other state. And um, in his trial, he presented a very convincing case that he, you know, just can't find work here, can't find housing here. And the mother never sees the kids anyway. And uh, subhanAllah, it, it looked like the judge was convinced and he made such a compelling case until he was cross-examined. When I cross-examined him, I got him to admit that he was lying, that he had a job the whole time, that he didn't really try to find alternative housing. I mean, I destroyed his whole thing. Again, had he just put his case on social media, the world may have believed him. But when he was cross-examined, his case fell apart. So that's why I think it's, again, very, very important. We understand social media just isn't the right place. And if we live by the sword, we're going to die by the sword. Today, we accept these uh, this this tool. It's a system. We accept this tool. We accept the system against the sister because she's a sister and, and we're angry brothers, which I think is ridiculous. We should not be having gender wars. But yeah, tomorrow and, then, yeah, I'm sorry. it's, it's going to happen on the other way. Yes, yeah, and, and, and I think the, there's a, a powerful ayah in the Quran, right? فَإِن طَائِفَتَانِ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ اقْتُلُوا فَأَسْلِحُوا بَيْنَهُمْ Right? بَيْنَهُمَا I think the ayah. But you have to, it, it says, if there's a party among the believers, two parties among the believers, not a kafir or a fasiq or whatever it may be or zindiq no it's talking about believers that are fighting with one another and they're arguing and fighting with one another try to make reconciliation between them and if you want to make reconciliation between people right then what is it right uh, it, by going to social media do you think that you're going to be able to have a meaningful remedy to, to the problem forget about bringing them back together Let's say the in this particular case a marriage is over. Fine, that's mm. the Allah. But mm. they can at least have a a, a a a cordial relationship, at least some kind of uh, uh, be civil with each other for the sake of families and children and everybody else involved, right? But you throw that out the window when you start throwing fuel on the fire. And the biggest problem is that when, specifically when it comes to marriages, this is there's nothing that makes the shaitan happier than seeing people end up in divorce and separate from one another. And this is the, one of the biggest problems that people don't realize because shayateen can be from the jinn and from the ins, can be from human beings. And there are definitely people who are walking around as human beings that are devils in, in human skin. And they are pushing this narrative. It's not just about this specific case. Or I'm saying in general, you'll find whenever there's something happening between spouses, the drama picks up and people get excited. They get into they celebrate it. it. They, they, it's yeah, they. What's the they what, what's gonna happen? I'm gonna grab my popcorn. I'm gonna. Wa I've seen people Literally. write comments like they're putting popcorn icons, like they're enjoying the drama, like they're it's a real it. life they're reality it show for them. Yeah, the real yeah. lives of Twitter or, or whatever it may be, right? It's, and it's, and to be honest, I, look, we at the Mad Looks, we're not above criticism, right? I'll I will openly admit, when I had uh, I seen a, a prominent figure tweet this out, and I thought, oh my God, this was verified. You know, and so I fell prey to this, a victim to this. I'm like, hey, you know what? It's verified. I said, hey, and I didn't even want to believe it. I said, if this is true about this, this is pure evil, right? And I even at that same time, I was still a, li a little bit reluctant. But even then, when when Brother Hassan reached out to me, I said, you know what? Uh, when things became a little bit more clear, I, I immediately deleted it. I'm not above criticism. Like I, I will say, we can make mistakes. The problem is, what do we do? Like if you're out there listening to this message now and you've put out something or you've talked about it, what are you going to do now that you 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 know we're talking about this and we're presenting this in a fashion where we're saying, hey, this is causing a problem. Don't do it anymore. Are you going to delete that tweet? Are you going to stop talking about it? If not, this is pointless. It's pointless. We have to life. be above this. Yeah. If you're mistaken in what you're doing, there's a tremendous punishment from Allah. But if you don't do anything, you're 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 you're, you're safe, you know. So the Prophet ﷺ taught us sometimes, you know, man samatanaja. Whoever is quiet is safe. Whoever doesn't tweet is safe. Whoever doesn't post is safe. Whoever doesn't share is is safe. For 99.999 percent of the people involved in the conversation, they have no firsthand knowledge and no direct involvement and no impact by it. It's just a form of entertainment or it's an axe to grind about something else. When the uh, when uh, when again. The system itself is fallacious. It's it's a failure.
this is not the right venue. That's my message. Let's not promote a culture that accepts social media trials because social media is not the right venue. It makes things more toxic, more destructive. It's a fitna. It brings people down to the level of backbiting, of gossip, of being involved in that which doesn't concern them. It's not healthy. It's not conducive. It's satanic. We need to put a stop to it. it can we be honest too? I think let's. I think what I've seen is that a lot of people that have taken it um, and added their you know, there's spices to it, right? From both sides. It could be the camp that's ultra left, like super hardcore feminist. And then you have this super right pill, you know, red pill guy who's trying to take advantage. One is going to say, oh, look, you see how abusive men are. Men are all crap. Men are all dogs. And then the other side is don't trust any women. All women are, are, are liars. Never believe them. And here's the, fun, the funny part. Muslims are buying into the narrative and uh, that, that, non-Muslims have created to deal with their own problems because they don't have a way to rectify. They don't have a, a, something as a, as a blueprint to follow in terms of how a relationship should be. And so they resorted to these ideas like red pillism, feminism, whatever it may be. And the Muslims are embracing this. And here's the sad part. These are people that deep down inside, they want to be in meaningful relationships with the opposite gender. But every waking moment, they're finding a way to attack the other gender. And then they do this for throughout their teens and their 20s and then their 30s. And then now they have to get married and they spent the entire adult life pretty much hating on the other gender. And now they're supposed to get married to them. How does that work for a Muslim community? How do we get together and how do we have meaningful marriages if you spend every making moment you get just being bitter about the other gender? It it's, doesn't work. It's, it's destructive. We're all losing through this. This is this is horrific and it's disgusting and we're all losing through this. And, no. and we need to provide. And this is, I'll just say this very quickly and then uh, Amran, we haven't heard from you in a while. Uh, it just, this was the opportunity for all the brothers who were sick and tired of men's lives getting destroyed by somebody just blasting unverified, unvetted, unchallenged, uncross-examined allegations to come out now and say, hey, this is why this is the wrong way to do it. Mm. This is not acceptable. It's not acceptable against the sister, and it certainly hasn't been acceptable against all those brothers. I mean, I remember when I was attacked, right? People attacked me on social media. They blast. They made up all sorts of weird things. I was like, I, I was going to get my own pop and say, oh, really? What else did I do? <laughs> you know, it was hilarious. <laughs> but... Uh, if it wasn't so sad and if it wasn't uh, uh, true that my children are old enough to read this nonsense of course they know alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. And, and they know better and, and they and they stood by me and uh, I'm so grateful for them but it hurt them you know it hurt them so um, my issue is again before before throwing this out understand the impact that this can have on everyone on people's lives on people's children but but the interesting thing is again all these crazy things came out on social media in the proper process the courts cleared my name 100 percent right even forget the social media even the mainstream media didn't want to publish <laughs> that that the allegations were false that my name was cleared they weren't interested in that they're just interested in gossip and slander and burning and destroying yeah well so naturally what would happen is a follow-up video responding to something like this from uh one of the parties who's probably making these allegations uh, um on social media they would they would say well i tried all that hassan and so and so didn't want to do this and they didn't want to um have an intermediary and all these breakdowns have happened and um i haven't i feel like i haven't gotten my justice and um and and at least in this case it just seems odd because the the brother's already married and uh, it seems like he was only married for a year and a half, but Morton, right? Yeah. And uh, to, to me, it's just a little funny because right. <laughs> some veterans who actually went through a, a long marriage and actually went through the, the cars. grueling abuse yeah. of uh, of a of a divorce, of a painful divorce after many years. Um, this this guy was a year and a half, and looks like he got married. Cop out. I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like dude, like you're okay now. Why don't you? But anyway, I mean, so let's just say. So he he'll probably say release another video saying that, oh, I did all this. I tried to get the third party people involved. People third party people didn't want to get involved, mm -hmm. or uh, that person didn't. Uh, the person he's making allegations against, they didn't want to co cooperate. They're mm -hmm. not responding to my messages. Um, how does this end? It's a great question. So one is listen. If there is continued actual harm, and I don't just mean chit chatter and just talk here and there, although that can be very painful, but if there's continued actual harm and someone needs to take action,
then we can talk about taking action. Again, action doesn't mean social media, but we can take action. But honestly, my advice for most people is just move on with your life. And that was the advice I gave the parties in this own situation. Move on with your life because it's unhealthy for you to be obsessed by this desire for justice. Look, I will tell you in my life, I personally have had people do me tremendously wrong. Hmm. But I didn't put my energy into trying to get justice from them. I put my energy into the charity. I put my energy into building myself, my career, my family. And that's brought me so much peace and so much joy. Alhamdulillah. And it genuinely made me just a happy person. If I just spent all my time trying to get back and get even, I'd be miserable. But I don't need to. I know there's a day of judgment. And people don't like that. Oh, don't just talk about that there's a day of judgment. And why should we have to leave it to that? And hey, that's even spiritual abuse. No, <laughs> literally, that's what you need for your own peace of mind. So my advice to everyone is, listen, unless it is a continued um, serious harm, I would say, leave it to Allah. Especially if it's about something in the past, leave it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will get it for you. Trust me, the wrongdoers will pay their price in this life and the next, and the oppressed will be vindicated and elevated and honored in this life and the next. So that's how, and I gave this, I mean, look, me coming out against the social media trials isn't to protect just the accused, but it's also to protect the accuser. And that was my sincere advice. I want goodness for both of them. I said, you're hurting yourself. In fact, in order to do this, look, in every marriage, both parties commit wrong. So you have to admit to wrongs you did. You have to paint yourself in a false light. The Prophet said, said, cover your own sins. Now you're opening up your own sins and your own shortcomings. And for people to talk about your sins as well. This is wrong. This isn't what our faith teaches. So again, my advice is just leave it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, if there is a continued harm and you need to take action, then yes, you have to exhaust the mediation arbitration process. And I don't believe that it was exhausted. I mean, I, people, for example, I myself, we offer this as a service. You don't have to use me. You, mm -hmm. uh, we got great staff, but you don't have to use our organization. There's others uh, like us that, that do a great job. So exhaust that process. And I don't believe it was exhausted. I, I, it, just, it just wasn't. People don't exhaust it. What I see are uh, people just not getting the answers they want, not getting the results they want, uh, and perhaps not properly engaging the process and then going lashing out to social media. But my, my advice to everyone is, again, uh, uh, if there's not a continued harm, if there's not a continued serious harm, just leave it to Allah. Move on with your life. Don't be obsessed. Don't don't identify as a victim. Don't be obsessed with victimhood. Leave it to Allah. Build yourself up. Move on with your life. If Hasn't there is a continuous harm, take legal action if you have to or seek mediation or arbitration. Yes. I, I got a question though. Do you think... Um, I'm going to be careful how I frame this, but do you think groups like FACE have contributed to uh, this idea of blasting people's personal like, you know, situations out there in the public. Because, I mean, there's an organization out there that, I mean, that literally has published documents and where they've admittedly said that they couldn't verify the information. But they, yet they couldn't verify it. They've ignored evidence that's contradictory. They're not qualified. Right. And, and, and they actually publish and write their reports and then they send their target. Oh, you have 24 hours to respond <laughs> to these allegations or we're going to move forward. And we've already made our conclusions, but now's your shot. Yeah. You know, the problem with these organizations, again, they're not run by qualified individuals that are trained neither in the Islamic science of what's allowed and what's not, nor are they trained in the legal and psychological aspect and the professional aspect of how you go about these things. Yeah. They try to play the role of a advocate, investigator, and judge. Yeah. It cannot be all three, you know? Yeah. So their whole system and mechanism is flawed. Uh, but you don't need that. I mean, there's, again, plenty of independent investigators out there. There's plenty of law firms that can do this. There's plenty of mediation groups that can do this. There's plenty of arbitration groups that are uh, there. Uh, we can do it. MuslimLegal.com can do it. And, and and if you don't want us to do it, we can help you find someone to do it. And my brothers and sisters, just who benefits when Muslims are talking about each other? Shaitan, he's the one who's happy. He's the one who wants this. I promise you, I swear by Allah, this is satanic. This yep. is from the work of shaitan. It is not serving righteousness. And I will challenge anyone who's speaking out to share it publicly that what they're doing is wrong Islamically, morally, ethically, uh, arguably, possibly even legally. What they're doing is wrong and it's harmful to the community and it's undermining the cause that they're trying to protect. If they, if, again, some of the brothers I've spoken to, I mean, only today a brother was in my office crying, literally crying in tears. He caught his wife cheating on him 
And after she was caught, the next thing she did is run away with the kids and claim uh, that he uh, did domestic violence and he was falsely arrested. And he's in tears, he's, you know, literally crying that he caught his wife's cheating and he didn't do anything violent, negative, harsh. He was just heartbroken. But because she was so guilty, she decided to take the best defense is the, they say, is a strong offense. She mm -hmm. went on the offense yeah. out of her own guilt, you know. But again, I'm not naming her because, again, uh, although I have the evidence and I know, but I just don't believe a social media trial is helpful right yeah. it's not the right way to do it we advocate for men that are wrongfully accused all the time and we also fight for women that have been uh, unjustly treated we fight a lot for them as well we're not pro men pro women we're pro justice we're pro islam and i'm telling you as a justice advocate as somebody who 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 earns a living by standing for justice social media trials undermine our fight for justice it's just it's a flawed system it's a flawed process and when you have a flawed system and a flawed process you always have bad results even if you're right i will tell you this is why they, they say that you know the the unqualified person who makes a fatwa is wrong even if he's right and he may get a sin for that because again he wasn't qualified even if his conclusion happened to be uh right it's it, it i mean it's a simpler example in in the u.s legal system right if the police just barge into your house without a warrant and they find drugs okay the judge will throw out the evidence of the drugs. He will not allow them, even though he knows you're guilty of using illegal drugs that the police caught from your house. But because the system, the way they went about it was wrong, was not consistent with the, uh, with the Constitution, he will pro throw out that evidence to protect the system. The system is more important than the individual results. We need to stand by a right system. And we have to all acknowledge that a social media trial kangaroo court system is wrong social media is not the right venue there's a lot of reasons why that is and we all uh, suffer when we make it uh, our preferred method of hassan, resolving conflict and there's no end it just feeds the flame and everyone is left worse off hassan when when you i've always thought when they cut when couples are secretly recording themselves that's already like this the writings on the wall that you might as well just divorce each other <laughs> uh, what are your thoughts on that like if you're contemplating divorce should you start like recording yourself does is, is that even helping uh, because i thought like, had, i thought you I've needed had, consent in uh, in uh, doing that kind state. of a thing how how, how well, laws may be different depending on the state and the situation but i will tell you this and i've I, i've had couples that record each other and i was like why are you still together this is <laughs> wrong you just shouldn't be together when when you get to the point where you're recording each other yeah relationship is done you know get yeah. therapy or or get out yeah you know it, we need people just to learn to forgive to move on put their trust in Allah and 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 really whoever humbles themselves for Allah Allah will elevate them sometimes if you it, it's it's really better to be oppressed I will say this cuz I've been through it it's better to get oppressed than to be an oppressor mm -hmm. ideally you don't want to be either but if you have to choose between being oppressed or being an oppressor it's okay as long as your life is not at risk take the uh, take the take, take the a higher ground you know and Allah will elevate you and honor you but don't resort to an unjust system that will will be misused and has been misused how many innocent people do we know had a vindictive ex or spouse or partner attack them online and try to destroy them when they were innocent and we're endorsing that system it's impossible to know which is right and which is wrong uh, who's being honest and who's not just from the social media circus you need to investigate in the proper venue and most people are not qualified and have no knowledge and now many people are getting the sin of gossip uh, the sin of backbiting, the sin of involving themselves in that which doesn't concern me. It's very destructive. Yeah, I mean, there's just, just one thing I was thinking about right now is that, you know, one of the biggest, uh, a, a lot of the guys that have shared this are people that have, uh, who are advocating for men's rights, right? They, let's just, you know, they, 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 oh, this is a win for us. We, we got it, right? Um, but the thing is that I'm looking at it and like the problem that they have, a lot of them, uh, an issue with as well as cancer culture, right? Like if someone can come out and just cancel you based on what you say or what you've done or whatever it may be. Or what someone claims you did. Right, exactly. And I'm saying like, isn't this exactly the same thing that you're, you're allegedly fighting against? It is. Against? And they're because, blinded. I mean, I've yeah. seen so many sincere people just blinded. I, and it, about, we both have the same goal. Like we're both against this cancel culture where somebody can just accuse you of something online and destroy your life we're all against yeah. that because we see how horrific it is yeah so because i'm against that yeah. i'm against sharing uh people's allegations on social media that haven't been verified and vetted yeah but, and yet they're doing the same thing they're actually living by that very same culture they want to destroy
Yeah, and the other thing I was thinking about too was while you were talking is that yes, it's you know, khali Allah, leave it to God. You know, Allah is the best of judges. But another thing I was thinking about while you were talking was some of these people have a serious issue with the qadr of Allah. Like meaning that, you know, there are things that are going to happen in your life that no matter what you did or want to do, you're not going to change it. It's something written for you. No matter how much you, cr you know, you complain about it or cry about it or whatever, it's just something that wasn't written for you. And if you're trying to uh, counter <laughs> the qadr of Allah, good luck with that. Like you're not yeah. going to, no matter how much you complain about it Brilliant. or how much you do, this is something that you're going to have to either live with or you're going to have to, you know, basically let it be the stake that you burn yourself down with, right? I mean, that's an excellent point, Mort, because I talked to a lot of, um, you know, the people who went through divorce because they were, you know, I went through a divorce, yeah. difficult divorce, and they, they talked to me about some of the challenges and, and the pain that they're experiencing. And the, the thing I tell them the most is that you have to embrace it because you're, if you truly are being oppressed, and it's something that Allah wants you to learn from, mm. you are supposed to go to another station. Hmm. where you you're almost like a, like a uh, you know when an animal sheds its skin it's mm, like you're you're, you're elevating yourself to another level that you couldn't have imagined the who trial. you were before that trial that it, fire that's it's, burning you it's, it's like a prison yeah. it's like yeah. you know it, it's horrible because yeah. people are, are saying all these horrible things about you and you're losing friends and uh, um and and you feel all alone and you feel trapped and but that's that's what that trial is meant to be, mm -hmm. and the people who abandon you, and if indeed you were that good person that in your mind it is, and you are truthful enough to realize, like, hey, I was not the, that horrible person that person is making out me out to be. Then, Allah is on your side. He wants you to learn something from this and elevate to somewhere completely yeah. different. Allah says, "Look, well, bashir is sabirin, right, and give glad tidings to, to those that are patient." Right, yeah. and that's the thing. Like the patience, the patience that you have when you're wronged, or if it's even in 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 a, in a calamity or in a trial, if you're patient, either Allah is expiating, you know, the sins from you, or or you're or, or essentially He's going to reward you with something even better. And to, to the friends who abandoned you, to hell with them. Yeah, to hell with friends. them, bro. Because yeah. sometimes you just need to get rid of that dead weight. Yeah, those people, those no, those, it, those sycophants it, who were just hanging it, on for clout or whatever you know yeah you, you hit the nail on the head listen my sheikh said you never lose friends you just know who the real ones are yeah. and the best thing allah can do is wait weed out the fake people you don't want the kind of people who will just hear something and jump to conclusions right. and abandon you you know uh, and, and don't have your best interest at heart that even if you're wrong guide you and teach you those mm -hmm. were not real friends so that's the first thing you know you never lose friends you just learn who the real ones are secondly our elevation is through our tribulation when mm -hmm. we are tested in these ways allah filled us i mean i went through it i was slandered attacked falsely accused i love that and now I, alhamdulillah i'm helping so many people that are going through it and frankly making a very good living as a lawyer doing that and giving back it's allah's blessings thirdly uh listen uh, the prophet said whoever says all the people are doomed is the most doomed of them okay uh the issue is this uh, what's a common pattern is oh i spoke and i've heard this again it's not about one individual i've heard this from multiple people that resorted to attacking people online it's, oh, we went to all the scholars and none of them supported me or none of them stood by me or none of them took my side. So it's either all the scholars are bad or maybe you're mistaken. Maybe mm. you're the wrong one. And what's most likely that all the scholars of this ummah are, are corrupt and evil and sellouts for whatever reason? And I, and I heard the same thing, like when a wife is attacking her husband, oh, none of the scholars wanted to stand up against another brother. And, and then when a sister is getting attacked, oh, none of the scholars wanted to attack a sister. Maybe the scholars just didn't feel that that would be the appropriate tactic because they have knowledge of the religion, right? And they're not clouded like you're clouded. You're clouded because you're in it. That's why even me as a lawyer, when I was going through my divorce, I, I didn't represent myself. I hired a lawyer because when you're in it, you cannot think clearly. It's impossible. That's why they say a lawyer who represents himself as a fool for a client. It's a fact that the people who are in the conflict cannot see things clearly. You need independent outside counsel. So if someone's coming and saying, well, all the scholars, you know, were wrong. Uh, is it really that all the scholars are corrupt? Maybe, maybe the brother, maybe the the brother or the sister themselves is the one that is mistaken. Yeah. So again, my humble request to all of you: I've never seen anyone attack a partner or spouse online except that it's hurt them in the long run, and in the end, whether it's days or years or months, whatever it is, they've regretted it. Don't do that. It harms. It. it, it if you feel sorry for 
the accuser, then understand that the accuser, when they resort to social media, they're, they're at, they are harming themselves in this dunya and the akhirah, most likely. And, and therefore, we really want to protect them from doing that. And to protect people from taking such destructive action, we have to create a culture where people know and believe and think that if I just attack someone online, no one's going to tweet it, no one's going to share it. If we do that, we take the oxygen from it. And we encourage people to resolve things through the appropriate channels. Again, no one is telling for a victim, especially one whose life is in danger or something, to stay uh, silent or to risk their life. Yes, we do advise sabr and leaving it to Allah and things that aren't really going to, dis- uh, you know, destroy you or harm you. You know, if it's just adha, if it's just like uh, f- harm, harmful words, emotions, different the light, things like that. But if it's something serious, we're not saying don't seek justice. Seek justice. Do it through mediation, through arbitration or the courts if you have to. Uh, But don't resort to social media because you're setting a bad precedent and you will hurt yourself. And we as a community have a responsibility to take the oxygen out of these things by not giving life to them, by retweeting and sharing and treating them as facts. They may be facts, they may be not, but none of us and none of the people that that, that have tweeted it and shared it, uh, including, I mean, my dear friend, you know, I'm sorry to name names, but his videos become the most popular one. I'm not, in fact, I won't name his name, but uh, who shared it. None of them have the firsthand knowledge to know what's right and what's wrong. They, they didn't do the process. So even if their conclusion is right, they're still wrong mm-hmm. because they didn't go through the process. Yeah. And, and finally, I just want to tell the brothers who, you know, I know I'm guilty of it too. During the, the uh, Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial, you know, a lot of us men, felt vindicated like hey look this is exactly what many men have gone through that you know th- that's not not that's not often talked about because you know but at, at least from as I, as I at least the, my thoughts regarding it have at least matured and um i started thinking about this specific case i'm just like we're just getting trapped in this gender yeah. war we're, and we're, we are we're, we're, we're we getting are. we're we're trying to get one up yeah we're we're, we're just trying to score it's points on the other and, and we're sick. doing what the feminists want you know exactly this... and it's un, it's undermining us all and by the way at least the johnny depp trial was a trial i mean it was an actual <laughs> trial each, <laughs> yeah. each case presented their yeah, case and they real. were cross-examined yeah and i i did celebrate the johnny depp trial i, I did that too was a much needed and necessary victory yeah. for justice no i think you're right uh, and, think, and against think... this cancel culture but yeah. it was an actual trial these aren't trials it's just somebody blasting uh, you know, what, whatever they want. And even if they're right or wrong, it's setting a bad precedent. And it's supporting the cancel culture, the believe her movement. It, now it's believe him. Yeah. Both are wrong. We believe the truth that is found through the right process. And I think you hit the nail on the head. Like with the Johnny Depp case, like the thing is that um, it was a trial and evidence came out and, you know, parties were able to arbitrate or at least a, a judge on it, whatever. To cross-examine jury, the evidence. Yeah, cross-examine, yes. analyze it. Um, it, and so it is, one would be justified in saying I'm happy with the results of, of that of that particular case, right? Because whether you agree with the system or not, but it was a system that it went through, right? And that was the verdict. Granted, um, you know, you can find some solace in that, right? That somebody got justice uh, out of many men who have been abused before. Great. Um, but in this particular case, it's like we're leaving it to the court of public opinion and mob rule, right? Yeah. And, and that's never going to end well. Right, because and I, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, it's never going to end well because I can guarantee you right now, if you engage in that, one day it's going to be you or somebody you know, and you'll yes. have no one to blame but yourself Jazakallah because khairan. you encouraged that when it happened. Jazakallah khairan. That's exactly the point. And actually, uh, the Johnny Depp trial is a great example of this. Why? Because in the Johnny Depp trial, before it, one party, Amber Heard engaged in the use of social media traditional media she laid out her allegations she painted johnny depp in such a horrific way and herself as such a helpless victim and the world believed her johnny depp lost so many jobs so many uh, opportunities he was basically uh, shut out from hollywood i mean he paid a tremendous price you know she presented a compelling case and compelling evidence and people ran with it and believed her The trial showed us that she was complete fraud and dishonest and things weren't what they appeared. And yes, Johnny may not be a saint, but certainly um, was not how she portrayed. So the point is, that's a great example. It showed us that through using media and social media, someone can really present that they uh, are someone is an abuser and that they are a helpless victim and, and people can be convinced because they don't know how to analyze the evidence. They couldn't cross examine the evidence. They got emotional. 
But then an actual trial showed the opposite was true. And that's my point. We, you can't trust social media trials and public media trials. We need to promote the proper mechanism. And that's why we have Muslim legal to help people. We can do it as advocates, uh, taking someone's side and fighting for them. Or we can do it as mediators and arbitrators, helping parties find a resolution or finding a judgment. Or we can do it as investigators, doing an investigation and publishing a report. But what we can't do it is all three, because that would be unethical and immoral and shameful, like some other organizations that do do all three as one, which is just completely uh, insane, because it's a conflict of interest. Uh, Hassan, I know you got to run, uh, you got a flight in the morning, but I really do want a couple minutes of you, your thoughts on the ban in france uh, related to the abaya the abaya ban that they've implemented related to um, um women and I shame think, on them yeah g girls going to school or public school wearing the abaya shame on them again again i mean uh, much worse than telling a woman to wear something is stripping her of wearing something they're literally stripping muslim women muslim women feel that the shape of their body is part of their private privacy is part of their aura and to force that off to make them strip in a sense uh, is just disgusting frankly chauvinistic and and misogynistic or whatever other istics they got and it, it is an outrage and and frankly i mean you know i do think it's it's they want muslims out and you know maybe it's to the point where Alam takun ardullahi wasi'a. isn't allah's earth vast fatuhajiru fiha that you should emigrate uh maybe that's what they want but fine if Muslims cannot practice freely, they should go to land where they can. Yeah, that's, a, that's a, such a wonderful point, especially because it seems what they really want is a reprogramming. They want, at least what they say is that, oh, you know, we're not against the, the color of your skin, etc. We want you to adopt French culture, French values, French liberalism, um, their... their um, sexual lifestyle um, where it's promiscuous sex with both genders intergender all kinds of um, you know faisha that is not uh, permissible in islam and, and and i really worry for the for the muslims over there because first of all they don't have a very loud or united voice where they're speaking from because many of their imams are france akbar yeah well for, for france's <laughs> france's imams are actually yeah. uh delegated through um, the government the government yeah that's a new thing initiative i mean look i think it's very clear they want a certain type of muslim right which is that new that that one who is a secular who believes that religion is private and should not be displayed in public and they want someone who um you know who, who is uh, going to embrace this idea of these liberal french values they right want La they want Atat turks turkey from yeah, yeah. 20 years um, ago and, and and i think to hassan's point i think muslims over there need to decide that uh, either there's a, a recourse here, and if not, then they need to make the tough decision of saying, listen, either we leave now and we protect our Islam in our future generation, or we stay here and we lose Islam with our future generation. It's one of those things where you, ha you have to pick and choose. And I'm not saying that this is for every place where there's some problem, but I think that the problem in France has gotten progressively worse. Like it's not just, they're not stopping. They're increasing their onslaught against Muslims, and and to be honest, it's not just about the hijab. Even the way they view minorities, like for example, um, you know, they they don't want them to settle in 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 major areas. They want to put them out in other areas, and they cry about Muslim ghettos, so so and so, you know, so forth and so on. And they create this problem, and then they put their hand up and say, "Why do we have this problem?" Right? And mm -hmm. the convenient thing is just to blame the Muslims. All the Muslims are not. They're not assimilated. They're not liberal like us. They're, they don't have the same mindset. They need to be re-educated, reprogrammed. But in fact, it's it's them that's creating the mess, yeah. right? If they really truly wanted to assimilate people, they would have given them the same housing inside of the major cities, the same jobs, the same experience, the same schooling. But they actually forced them to be outside of that, and they created their own subculture. And now France doesn't like that subculture. And, you know, they're trying to combat that. But... <laughs> I don't know where it's going to go from here. The ayah of the Quran, uh, hate, rank hatred has already appeared from their yeah. mouths, but what they conceal in their hearts is far worse. That's just what I think about France. Yeah. What, or, what this, the, this is just, or they'll never be happy with you. This is the just Jews a small... They'll never be happy with you, no matter, even if you leave your religion, they'll never be happy with you. Yeah. They'll never be happy with you. And this is the thing about it, right? Like, and he, here's, he, here's the one thing I feel like is a problem. 
I, I wonder when Muslims are going to wake up and realize the only time that we ever get things done is that, and when we have honor and, and, and command or respect is when we stand up for our principles. I'm not saying do anything radical or anything like that. This is not what I'm speaking about. I'm saying be principled because either they're going to respect you or they're going to tell you to leave. One, one of the two things, right? Yeah. But if you trying to bend over backwards, we've seen how this has happened time and time again, especially in America, case in point, after 9-11, you know, many Muslims tried to say, oh, you know, we want to kind of relax this or not discuss, kind of just make a very palatable version of Islam, like, n discuss nothing that might be seen as controversial, right? But that didn't stop them from the Patriot Act. It didn't stop them from screening you. It didn't stop them from illegal wi illegal wiretaps. It didn't stop any of that. <laughs> it just made them, it gave, it emboldened them. It said, oh, these we've got them right where they want them. They're terrified of us. Let's go full force now. Yeah. And, right? and it's a warning to, to the people of France too. Like now they're, just like how the United States did, they use these laws to first discriminate against Muslims, but they're they're expanding their surveillance to uh, to you, to the average American. So the, they're, they're, now they've established a precedence, at least in the United States, to su surveil Muslims, and they're now using those same laws on on Trump supporters and all, all kinds of different people who they're wanting to collect evidences with, and and the same thing will happen to France, where you know these laws and things that, that they're using against Muslims, they're eventually going to use it on you, the French people, the average French person, yeah. you know? Yeah. So um, that's our show for this evening. Hassan, thank you so much for joining us. Do you have uh, um, any um, closing thoughts? Thank you so much. No, I just that you look, Shaitan is our enemy and he's been plotting for generations to destroy us and we really need to understand his tactics and not fall into it. And any Thing that gets Muslims talking about each other, getting involved with that which doesn't concern him, using the wrong systems he celebrates. So I, it, whenever there's a controversy between a husband and a wife, it, one that goes public, my heart goes out to both of them. I feel for both of them, and I genuinely want goodness for both of them. Uh, and and we have to recognize that that public fights are not good for anyone. They harm <coughs> all involved. And we as a community, my message really to the community. Um, okay, the person who attacked their spouse publicly, they're going through a lot of pain. They're not perhaps thinking clearly, even if they think they are. They don't see how they're harming themselves, even though they are. But we, we have no excuse. We, this is not our business, and we cannot give life to it. And whatever cause we believe in, like going against Me Too or going against cancel culture, by supporting a different version of it, uh, a different version of Believe Her called Believe Him, we're only reinforcing that, and it's, it's, it shatters the system of justice. So let us stand for justice. Let's take out the, the, the oxygen from these things. And finally, see how much time in your day we are spending talking about others, spending talking about things which don't concern us versus time we are spending doing things that are productive, giving in charity, helping the poor, helping the needy. Let's make sure we are doers and builders, not destroyers. Let us be constructive, not destructive. Work sincerely for Allah and wish goodness for all humanity. I was going to say all the believers, but really we should wish goodness for all humanity and be a source of that, not wish evil or harm upon anyone. May Allah accept from us. I mean, yeah. I mean uh, for our listeners, if you haven't done so already, make sure you click the old like button. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Throw a comment section in the comment section below with your thoughts related to this episode. Uh, help us out on patreon.com forward slash the Mad Mom Lukes, or you could donate to us through the Mad Mom Lukes at gmail.com through paypal um that's our show thank you sir so much we'll see you all next time assalamualaikum